Hello, I am Alex Weiss, or A-dubs, on the internet. If you are watching or listening right now, then you've probably seen my YouTube series, Revealing Your Secrets, where I expose the wildest confessions that you all share with me. And there is a lot more where that came from. So welcome to Revealing Your Secrets, the podcast, where every week I will be sharing and reacting to the secrets you send to me in whatever ways you send them in, whether that's written submissions, voicemails. I'm going to be talking to some of you on the phone, even in person. You are only as sick as your secrets. So I am here to hold space for you to share them. It is a safe space, although I might judge you a little bit. It's going to be hard not to. On top of judging, though, I will be trying to help giving my feedback based on my life experiences. I'm no professional, no expert, but I I hope to give the insight that I do have and be somewhat of use to those of you who are willing to submit your secrets. And for the subjects that are beyond my ability to tackle, above my pay grade, we are going to be having a licensed professional therapist on the podcast. Not only a licensed professional therapist, but my therapist which should be interesting. So look out for that in the next episode. Hi, Alex. Um, Something that's been weighing heavy on my chest is yesterday was actually my birthday. It was my 21st birthday. And in the morning of my 21st birthday, me and my boyfriend of five years actually got married. So, yeah. Um, we're married. (laughs) Um, it's been weighing heavy on my chest because ever since it happened, I've just been feeling really weird because normally, you know, it's your wedding day. Normally people are happy or even sometimes regret their decision. And I'd rather feel something than nothing, but I feel nothing. I never, I didn't cry. He didn't cry all felt like strictly business in a way like we love each other we've been together for five years so you would expect it to be like this big emotional thing like finally we're getting married (laughs) but maybe because it was not special it didn't feel real but yeah I don't know yeah so that's my secret (laughs) damn the fact that you would rather feel regret than nothing. Ooh, I recently learned this term, um, Paris syndrome. When tourists go to Paris, they feel disillusioned by a city that is not like this idealized version that they've seen on TV, in the media. And I feel like, obviously, it's not the same thing. Like, it's synonymous in that I, I feel like we're compulsively handed this narrative that our wedding is supposed to be the most perfect, beautiful day of our life and marriage is the end-all, be-all goal. It's like the expectations are far too high. So much so that I wouldn't be surprised if most people who get married... I'd like to take a poll, actually. That would be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if most people who get married feel similar to you, where they're just kind of like, this isn't like totally as awesome as I wanted it to be. And then that's so much pressure on your relationship. If if you decide to look at it like, because the wedding and the marriage itself isn't, doesn't add up to the expectations that I thought it would, what does that mean about our relationship? But I don't think that's the, I wouldn't say that that's the problem. I think it's a matter of like, It's great to have high expectations in your life, but I've noticed in my life when my expectations are too high, when I want something to give me bliss or more happiness than it possibly may be able to, then I end up feeling even more upset with what's actually happening because it's just trying to fit reality into this picture that I have in my head. I mean, the other explanation is that you made the wrong choice. (laughs) Oops. But hey, you can always get divorced. I I know some people won't like that I'm saying that. But I really do. Like, so, so many people get divorced. I feel like there's like a wink at the end of till death do us part. You know? Like, if you need till death do us part, but 
If you need to go, you can. But that doesn't actually sound like the issue. It, it sounds like you love your partner. It just felt a bit confusing that the experience didn't add up to what you thought it would be. Here's what I do in my life. When I find that something is making me upset because it's not looking like what I expect it to look like, I try to practice gratitude because I feel like ex expectations can be a bit of a trap where it's like it's never enough. You want more happiness, more fulfillment, more whatever it is. And so when I find myself in that headspace, I like to practice doing gratitude lists, whether it's in my head or writing them down. Sometimes I have like avoidant tendencies in my romantic relationships. And when I catch myself being in a headspace that isn't really conducive to fostering a happy relationship, instead of focusing on the negative stuff or worrying, I start thinking about like, what's something my partner did today that I loved or ways that we spent time together that I really appreciated. So it's worth a try worrying a little bit less and focusing more on what's right in front of us and, and finding the, the gratitude for what, for what we love about what's in front of us. That's what I do. Good luck. I think, I think it'll work out. I bet it's, I bet it's already working out. <laughs> I just want to make you feel better, but that's, that's up to you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. As we will see during the podcast, life can be hard and confusing. So BetterHelp Online Therapy is here to help you navigate it all by assessing your needs and matching you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. Therapy is something that has completely transformed my life for the better. Not only having someone listen to what I'm going through, but teach me skills on being more effective in dealing with what's going on in my life. And a fun tip, if there's a day of the week you do not like, book therapy on that day and it makes it that much more tolerable. That's how I feel because I really enjoy therapy. And now I like Wednesdays. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. And the service is available for clients worldwide. With BetterHelp, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to deal with driving or sitting in an uncomfortable waiting room, avoiding making eye contact with the other people in the room. You can have therapy from the comfort of your couch. Sometimes I even do it horizontal in my bed, which is I love. It's very convenient. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. It's a great way to show up for yourself and invest in your own well-being because you deserve some inner peace. Visit betterhelp.com slash Alex. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P slash A-L-Y-X. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And a very special offer for the Revealing Your Secrets listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Alex. Have you ever had an acne breakout come at the worst possible time? I know I have. A few years ago, I booked my first legit acting gig and I was so jazzed about it. But the week before and then during, I had a really bad breakout. And I was so embarrassed because the producers of the show were even talking about it, like, like sidebarring about the problem, which made it so much harder for me to just focus on the work that I was doing because I was self-conscious. And I know that this is a common experience. We all have had struggles with our skin and have felt pressure to resolve them as quickly and as easily as possible, which is why I'm excited to partner with Apostrophe, a sponsor of this episode. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. At Apostrophe, an expert dermatology team will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. You just fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals, medical history, snap a few photos of your skin, and a board-certified dermatologist will help create your initial customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, chest knee, back knee, butt knee. They treat breakouts from head to toe. I personally loved the apostrophe sign-up process, mostly because I didn't have to go anywhere, but I just loved how the quiz covered everything they needed to know, especially with uploading the photos. I was able to just sit back and trust that their dermatologists 
would know the best treatment plan for me. And then the turnaround was so quick for them delivering the treatment plan and then the actual products. We have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash secrets when you use our code secrets. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash secrets and click begin visit and then use our code secrets at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash secrets and use the code secrets to get your first dermatologist crafted treatment plan for $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. All right, let's listen to the next one. So this had to have been about middle school for me. Um, I had a Russian dwarf hamster named Dimitri. And I remember one day I was on FaceTime with my friend and uh, she saw the cage in the background. And so she was like, hey, is that your hamster? Can I see him? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so I flipped the camera around and I brought her over to the cage. (laughs) And I lifted the cage (laughs) door and I lifted the igloo and (laughs) I'm going to hell for laughing, but he was dead. I thought he was dead. Okay. Um, He had pissed and shit all over himself and um, I thought he was dead. And he was not moving. So I started crying and I started screaming, why, Jesus, why? And my brother came in and he decided that he was dead. So we decided to go and bury him in the backyard. And it wasn't until um, (laughs) he was in the hole being submerged under dirt that I realized that he was still, in fact, taking shallow breaths and was not yet dead, but dying. And I, for some reason, said nothing and let my brother continue to fill the hole. And I am positive I'm going to hell for that. Um, So sorry, Dimitri. Rest in peace. Oh, this brings me so much pain. I'm so upset with you. Wow. Sorry, I love creatures. I I think most of us do. So this is like highly disturbing. I'm glad you have remorse at the least. I've been reading secrets for years now and there's a lot of people who kill on purpose, who get off on it and don't feel remorse. So I'm happy to hear you're not gonna do it again. But I'm I'm not mad at you. I'm disappointed that you didn't say anything when you were supposed to. I kind of relate though to having experiences where for some reason you just freeze, like you become immobile. I don't know if it's a trauma response or just like an inability to speak up, inexperience speaking up, but I've been there before where in hindsight, I'm like, why didn't I say anything? I hope it doesn't sound like I'm making excuses for you because I'm actually very upset with you. I think I'm just trying to feel better (laughs) because this doesn't feel good. I have this musing that I think about sometimes. I don't know if it's like an intrusive thought, or I'm onto something, maybe both. But um, when my cat approaches me and like makes bids for attention, she wants me to play with her, whatever, pet her, whatever it is, and I neglect her. <laughs> I love my cat, okay? We have a great relationship. I don't consistently neglect my cat, but sometimes she wants my attention at bad times. And I have this thought that comes into my head almost every time that I'm kind of like, It's inevitable that in another life, I am going to be a cat that is lightly neglected by their owner, not like as fulfilled as I could be. In every instance, it's like this intrusive thought. It's like, well, I'm I'm gonna get karma for this one. And when I wanna get pet, I'm not gonna get pet. My point being, if and when you reincarnate as a Russian dwarf hamster who gets buried alive, good luck. Oh. And you know what? I would like to dedicate this episode to Dimitri, the Russian dwarf hamster, who didn't get to live as long as they should have. So this one is for you. Okay, now we can move on. So I have had problems with myself and like my relationship and... I'm in a relationship for about a year and four months now, and I, I'm, to say the least, I'm pretty much miserable. I have a lot of problems with self-esteem and, you know, self-love and self-worth, et cetera. And um, 
it's just making me miserable in the relationship because he does a lot of things that make me want to like cry and you know just make me unhappy and it's gone to the point where it's like I'm so used to it I'm like well I deserve it I guess and it's like gotten to the point where I really want to like hurt myself and it's not good but like I can't leave because I grew up without that love and affection so it's like it's made me obsessive and people are always like we'll just leave but it's like kind of hard and I would just really like some advice because um I'm kind of getting to my breaking point I guess and it's like uh I don't know what to do and um I basically how I could describe it is Cassie from Euphoria but not as extreme as her but very familiar and I just really need help and I would love to hear your advice Okay, well, I've actually been in a very similar situation. So I'm going to speak from my experience based on what I am hearing you say. The first thing, which is great news, is that you actually sound like you're a lot better off than you think you are. Uh, There's this spiritual teacher I really love, Abraham Hicks, and they have this emotional guidance scale that's basically like the lowest form of emotions, grief, desperation to the highest forms, love, happiness, joy, acceptance, and in between, obviously, lots of other emotions. And it sounds like, you, and this is just my guess, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like you're veering from like unworthiness and insecurity to pessimism, frustration, which is actually, I mean, it sounds bad still, but it's way higher up on the scale. The advice that, that that Abraham Hicks gives on climbing the scale and then in doing so making better decisions is like reaching for better feeling thoughts. So I remember when I was in a relationship that was really bad, it was abusive. I, I would have thoughts like I can't leave even though I wanted to. And I noticed that the more I started reframing it to I can leave even though maybe I won't right now but I can I felt a little bit more leeway in in what I was able to do with my life and in 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 due time when I was ready I did leave and I actually fully believe that you will leave as well because you can and it sounds like you're very unhappy and just because you didn't feel like you got the love that taught you that you deserve to be loved when you're younger doesn't mean you can't teach that to yourself something that really helped me in this specific situation and something I still do to this day whenever I'm in a pickle, I walk to a bookstore or drive, take a bird, whatever (laughs) mode of transportation, a boat if you need to, um, go to a bookstore and go to the self-help section and find a book that speaks to you in relation to the subject that you're dealing with. Our intuitions are pretty good. Like you'll find something that's, that's right for you. Read the whole book and I promise you, by the end, you will come out with a a new, fresher, healthier perspective. Actually, I meticulously chose the books that are sitting on this set. And um, the book Sacred Powers right there is one that is, is the book that I read that helped me leave the relationship that I was in. There was this whole part of the book that asked you to take stock of your life and where you're putting energy and what's actually giving energy back to you. And to like lose the emotional attachment and the narrative to the relationship that I was in and just see very tangibly that it wasn't making sense allowed me to take some steps back that I don't think I would have otherwise have been able to take. And maybe that book won't help you, but there is a book that will. So I would do that if you um, if you're up for it. And I did it. So I I know you can, too. Finding and booking a doctor who's right for you doesn't need to be a terrible, strenuous experience. Will they take your insurance, understand your needs, or be available when you can see them? With ZocDoc, the answer can be a refreshingly pain-free yes. During the lockdown, I started growing like a cyst or something on my face, and I was very uh, unsettled by it. So naturally, I wanted to go to a doctor, but I didn't want to leave the house for it. And I always try to accomplish everything as simply and efficiently as possible. So I discovered ZocDoc uh, on my own, actually, and it was so easy, so fast. I had a video call with the doctor. They prescribed me medicine, and I resolved the issue more quickly than I had even expected. I chose the video visit option in this specific scenario, but of course, you can book in person with ZocDoc as well. So uh, it's very cool to be working with ZocDoc because I use their service. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, 
take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I am one of them. With ZocDoc, you can find the doctor that is a right fit for you by reading up on local doctors, getting verified patient reviews, making sure you're set up to see someone in your network, choosing whether or not you want to see the doctor in person or do a video visit, choosing an appointment during a time slot that works for your schedule, and just like that, you're booked. In the chaotic world of healthcare, let ZocDoc be your trusted guide to find a quality doctor in a way that is surprisingly pain-free. With ZocDoc, you can get your docs in a row. Go to ZocDoc.com slash secrets and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash secrets. ZocDoc.com slash secrets. All right, so we're not fully abandoning the old Revealing Your Secrets format. We're still taking written submissions. I know a lot of you are not going to want to send in voicemails where we can hear your voice. So let's read some of your written secrets. The other day, my dad was texting my mom. They have been split up for many years, basically begging to get back with her. My mom was cracking up at some of the stuff my dad was sending her because he was acting so desperate. Even though he had only broke up with his long-term girlfriend, who he cheated on my mom with just hours prior. She decided to show me some of the texts because they were funny. And as I was reading them, he sent my mom a dick pic. I saw it. Oh, I have never felt more dirty and uncomfortable in my whole life. Needless to say, I can't look at my dad in the eyes without feeling like I want to vomit. Oh my God. I feel like you deserve money. <laughs> Like <laughs> some sort of compensation. So you, I don't know, so you can buy therapy, so you can handle it in unhealthy ways, whatever you need. Oh my God. Sorry, I can't help but place myself into the situation. And I don't want to be thinking about this right now, but now I'm imagining my dad's. Um, okay. You know what's actually almost worse about this secret, I would argue, is seeing your dad like codependently so desperate to rekindle with your mom like with the person that he cheated on her with, that the second they broke up, he can't bear to be alone along enough that he goes back to the person that he hurt. Like there's something about seeing your dad in that light that is, I, I actually think is more traumatizing than seeing his genitals. <laughs> I mean, both are really bad. <laughs> but I, I, I think I would choose the latter over... I don't know if that's true. There, it's. I feel, I'm sorry. All I can say, I'm sorry. I want to send you money. <laughs> What's your Venmo? I think my period killed someone. <laughs> what? When I was 14, I went to sleepaway camp. One night, we were sitting at the big campfire that everyone sings songs and shit at every night. And a little girl, probably like seven years old, had been clinging to me all day, was sitting in between my legs. I also happened to be on my period and it was extremely wild. Like, I don't know what was going on, but I've never had a period that heavy before. I ended up bleeding through my pants and onto this little girl's back and it left a huge stain on her shirt. When we all got up, one of the camp counselors noticed the stain on the girl's back and everyone started freaking the fuck out, especially the little girl. She would not stop crying and screaming and eventually they had to call her parents and they rushed to come get her. I was too embarrassed to tell anyone that it was my fault, so I just kept my mouth shut. Anyways, turns out her parents were really anal and uptight and they somehow got the camp in trouble with the police. Things escalated because this wasn't the first complaint the police had gotten about the camp and the camp ended up being investigated. Turns out the owner was committing tax fraud or some shit, so the place ended up getting shut down. The owner killed himself shortly after to escape jail. It's been years, and I honestly don't feel bad about any of this, even though it's technically my fault. Anyways, love your vid, Scorch. <laughs> oh my God. I am not at all happy that this man killed himself. I don't want anyone to ever kill themselves or hurt themselves. But this story is such a, an interesting anecdote to how the world works in mysterious ways. Like, how did your heavy flow lead to an unsolved crime being solved? That's, in, that's like not a coincidence to me. It's like you are some sort of instrument 
in karma playing out the way it was supposed to. And you know, people say period blood is powerful. You can use it as fertilizer. You can use it for spells if you're into that kind of thing. You can use it as a face mask. It's supposed to be good for your skin. I haven't tried it, but I'm, I'm tempted. I've thought about it. You can use it for paint, an art supply. And now this just in, period blood solves crimes too. What can't a woman's body do? So congratulations on being the first to discover that that is so. Cheers to you and your magic pussy. Keep bleeding, girl. In high school, I had a serious stealing phase. I justify this secret because my school is A, extremely racist and homophobic. I live in Texas, if that sums it up for you. And B, I just fucking wanted to. I stole three Apple pencils, 11 of the really nice calculators. <laughs> you only need one calculator. <laughs> like, why 11? A stim machine? The thing that sends vibrations through your body for workouts and shit? Eight phones, almost 20 pairs of shoes. What do you even do with 20 pairs of shoes that they probably won't fit you and you can't wear them to school because people are going to be like, hey, those are my shoes. And a shit ton of jewelry. I was in sports, so in the locker room, people would just leave their shit on the ground. So every other day, I would take some shit, not to make it look suspicious. It got so bad that the school thought a thief was walking around on campus. A thief was walking around on campus. It was you. I would occasionally leave some of my shit at home to make people think I was a victim to the thief as well. That's actually really smart. But it was me the whole time. Yes, I'm a criminal. And no, I don't regret it. I don't buy your excuse that you're just like fighting racism and homophobia with stealing because you weren't even targeting. If you told me you were specifically targeting the most hateful people at your school, I guess maybe I'd be like a little bit more on, on board you know? But this just sounds like kleptomania, <laughs> like point blank. And I don't know if you're still stealing. I hope you're not. If you are, betterhelp.com slash Alex. But I, I also have an alternative pitch for you. If you are still stealing, I don't condone this, okay? But I do have a pitch for you, which is I've always wanted to see a kleptomaniacs haul channel. All things stolen. You know what I mean? Like my kleptomaniac, like gym haul, stuff I stole from the gym today or like out of people's purses. I want to see your lifetime collection. I want to see the 11 calculators. I want to see the shoes. I want to see you tried them on. It's just like, uh, maybe this does exist on the internet because everything's on the internet. I've never actually looked it up, but I, I sincerely think that this would be, it would go viral. So if you're out of a job right now and you're still out there stealing, get help or really lean into it and make a YouTube channel hauling the stuff you've stolen. I will be the first to subscribe. Hey, Alex, let's get right into this. The first time I ever slept over at my boyfriend's house, I had to sit shit so badly when I woke up, like so bad. We had only been official for a few weeks at this point, so pooping in his bathroom was slightly embarrassing, especially because it was connected to his bedroom so he would be able to hear it and smell it. I live like 30 minutes away and I was pretty sure I'd be able to make it home if I left immediately. So I told him I forgot to feed my cat, so I had to go home. I was like five minutes away from his house when I quickly realized I was not going to make it home. I don't know why I decided this was the best solution to my problem, but I made the executive decision to take the large Chick-fil-A cup from my cup holder and, oh my God, and proceed to absolutely diarrhea into it. I filled that hoe to the brim. I do not condone littering, but if you think I was about to drive 25 minutes home with a cup full of rancid diarrhea in my cup holder, you are mistaken. Long story short, I left a Chick-fil-A cup of biohazard material in the parking lot of a movie theater. Should I tell my boyfriend? We've been together for a year now, and I know he'd think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. I really relate to you. Like, I feel like if I was in this scenario, I would have done the same thing. I probably would have tried to find a public restroom before pooping in a cup on the side of the road, but I would have tried to avoid pooping in his bathroom as much as humanly possible. So um, I feel you, girl. But you know what makes me kind of angry? 
the difference between how I feel like most women versus men would handle this situation. Like any guys that I know or have been involved with probably would have just been like, hey, I'm going to take a dump in your bathroom and I'm going to leave the door open and I'm going to throw my shit at you when I'm done. No, probably not that. But um, look, and I know that there are men who probably would feel embarrassed, but and there's also this like unrealistic standard that women don't like defecate <laughs> or do anything gross. But I'll let you guys know, I poop and I love it. I did it this morning and I'm going to do it tonight. And I hope one day we all feel comfortable pooping wherever we need to. Not on the side of the road in a cup, but like in a bathroom that we feel like we need. You understand. You didn't want to poop on the side of the road in a cup. So here's to hoping that that's in the future. Here's to gender equality. Also, I would love if the person who submitted this, if you called into the show and told your boyfriend on the show with me, let me know if you're interested. I would love that. Expect an email. This next segment is the most exciting part of the show. I am going to be talking one-on-one -on -one with people who have submitted secrets. I told you the podcast was going to be more in-depth, and this is the most in-depth we could get, is actually getting on the phone and talking to you guys about your experiences. So I'm honestly just honored that so many of you are willing to talk to me about your experiences. Let's begin. This past summer, I decided to get a sugar daddy because I was having a hard time finding a job due to COVID. And I've seen a lot about it online. So I decided to do it. So I went on one of those websites and I found this guy who was very old. He was like 60. And we decided to talk and then he wanted to hang out. So he got us a hotel room, red flag number one. And I went to the hotel room. We ended up fucking and literally like it was so bad i was just watching the olympics the whole time while it was going on and then after he finished he gave me money and i left i never saw him again cuz he was just weird and i got like weird vibes then a couple weeks ago his wife who he never mentioned he told me he didn't have any kids he didn't have a wife and that he worked for automotive his wife contacted me saying that he lied about who he was. He was a convicted felon for money laundering and like embezzlement. And that she was contacting me because she found a video of us having sex in the hotel room and that she was going to put it online and ruin my life and I literally had to go to the police and be like oh my god this woman is threatening me also this guy lied about his whole life and he illegally recorded me while having sex uh, <laughs> the way it cut off at the end while having oh my god that okay I have I have a lot of questions so I'm really glad that we can talk to this girl <gasps> hello Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so grateful that you're talking to me. I'm so excited to be here. I have been subscribed for so long. Thank you for just being here and talking about this with me because honestly, it sounds traumatizing. Oh boy. Yeah, it was quite the experience, honestly. I have questions for you, but before I ask you them, I just want to say if I veer into territory that's uncomfortable or you just don't want to talk about it, just let me know. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I don't know much about the sugar baby process, but when you sign up, are you putting your real information and your real name on the website? No, I used a fake name. I used my real pictures, but a fake name, so they couldn't, like, look me up and look up, like, where I lived and whatnot. So, but I think people do use their real names. I was just scared. Can I ask what your fake name was? It was Cherry Nicole because oh. my hair used to be a lot more red <laughs> and my middle name is Nicole. I was wondering if it was like a sexy like stripper yeah. type name and it was. <laughs> yep. Okay, is. Cherry Nicole. When you sign up for the website, do you explicitly say what you're looking for? Like would your profile 
say, not looking to meet up unless unless you meet this amount of money? Or are they saying what they're looking for? Like, I want to talk to you this much in one week or like we need to get intimate. So a lot of the websites, you're not allowed to say, I want to do this for money. So you kind of have to leave it vague and then they will um, like message you if you guys like match because it's kind of like Tinder. And then they'll say like, I want to meet up once a week for $500 or I want to text you like three times a day for however much money. But you don't like put that on your profile because then you'll be banned from the website. Isn't that funny? Because that's literally what the website's for. I know. I don't really. I think it must be like a lawsuit situation where it's like, "Mm, is that prostitution? Like, maybe don't. What did he say to you when you first matched with him? What did he say he wanted? He was like outright like, I want to meet up. I want to fuck. I want to give you money and go home. And you were like, let's get paid. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, I was unemployed at the time. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, you don't look bad. It's only going to be for like an hour. And he gave me like $600. Okay. I was going to ask you how much money. Um, yeah. So when you first met up with him, it was at a, a hotel or a motel? Yes, it was. What Were you nervous? What was going through your head when you first met up with this person? I was really nervous, mostly because he was already there. So, like, I was meeting him there, and I was, like, I could walk in and get murdered. But I, like, know the area I was in, and I was, like, "Mm, what's there to lose? (laughs) Is there someone with you in the background laughing? Um, There's a baby. I actually have my roommates and a literal, like, brand new baby. Um, He's only six weeks old, so he's, I think he's, like, mumbling. Whose baby? Uh, my best friend. Congratulations. <laughs> she said thank you. I'm sure the baby is enjoying this story time. Oh, yeah. Baby's first trauma. <laughs> okay. So before, like, I it doesn't sound like you are too disturbed by it, but I have had sexual experiences that were really, like, that I didn't want to be a part of that in hindsight, I was like, oh, that was traumatic. Do you, are you okay? Do you feel that way about the experience? Um, I feel like relatively okay about it. Um, honestly, in hindsight, I've had a lot of crazy things happen in my life. So like, it's like mid totem pole of like, oh, trauma. Um, and it's more of just like, of course that would happen. Like, why would that not happen? The one time I try and do something that I see tons of people doing. Okay, so do you have a mentality where you're like, I have bad luck? Because when I mean, you're like, of course that's going to happen. Do you in, uh, attract chaos, I guess, is the question that I'm asking. I do attract chaos, I think. I don't necessarily consider it bad luck because some of the chaos is good. Okay, I understand. Also want to just say, like, in asking you if you attract chaos, by no means do I feel like this situation was your fault I just want to validate that, that that probably was traumatic and none of this was something that you asked for. I just want to say that because like in saying that you attract chaos, I feel like is, bla- is like victim blaming. I oh, don't no, want to do it, that. It's true. I do attract chaos, but yeah. But good and bad. Yes. It's all for uh, character development. Period. Period. Um, also screw that lady, honestly, for making you the problem when her husband was the one cheating and doing really sketchy stuff. I didn't even know that he was married or anything. Like he told me he was single, lived alone, worked at a car dealership. And then all of this came out and I was like, so you're married, you're a felon. Like you don't even work. What, what is going on? Based on your experience meeting him, did it make sense once you found out the truth? anyways yeah yeah Yeah. I mean he seemed like off I never met up with him again after that one time because I had weird vibes yeah oh I'm sorry I I just I really hate a creepy man and this guy sounds like the worst of the worst I know I know his wife was kind of scarier than he was though (laughs) okay yeah so what happened she got your information how and and what'd she say I have no idea how she found me But she found me on Facebook and she messaged me like literally like 70 times being like, I'm going to ruin your life. This. So she 
said that he recorded us having sex in the hotel room, which I cannot confirm or deny because I have not seen the video. Um, but the police like did kind of confirm that they wow. talked to her about the video. But she said that she was going to post it everywhere online and that if I didn't give her, like, she was blackmailing me. If I didn't give her money, like, thousands of dollars, she was going to ruin my life, like, get me fired from my job, send this video to, like, all of my family and friends and post it online. Were you like, joke's on you? I don't have a job. <laughs> That's why I did it in the first place. Unfortunately, I had just gotten a new job. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was working with kids at the time. I worked at a daycare. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get fired for sure. Like, I imagine this was really stressful. It was very stressful. And I found out all about it. Kind of good timing right before my therapy appointment for that day. (laughs) So I was like, I have a lot to unpack. And then I went straight from therapy to the police station. Yeah. I didn't know what else to do. Is that what your therapist told you to do to go to the police? Um, yeah. She yeah. was like, you need to report all of this. This is a crime. Was it helpful going to the police? Like, what did they, what did they say? What did they do? They surprisingly, um, were more like, I wouldn't say helpful, but they were less like judgmental than I thought they would be. Cause I thought I was going to go there and be like, so I had sex with an old man and he was married and all of this. And they were like, oh, wow, yeah, that's, like, not okay for them to be doing. That's definitely illegal. We'll contact them. They contacted them, apparently. It still didn't stop. They were still harassing me. At this point, both of them were harassing me. Like, you need to give us money. We're going to, like, leak this video. And I was like, so now you both are in on it? And then I went to the police again. And then they were, they called them and were like, you're going to get arrested if you do this. You need to stop. And I never heard from them again. Okay. So once the police told them that they would take legal action or like they would arrest them, they they just stopped. They never contacted you? Yeah. But they were like threatening me. They were like, we're going to get you arrested for prostitution. So I was terrified going to the police that they would arrest me. That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, what you were, 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 because technically you had sex for money, right? So, yeah. Was there ever a point where the police were like, you, you might get in trouble? No, actually, they were like, yeah, people like do this. You know, I don't think I fully disclosed. Like, hey, I had sex and then he gave me money. I was more like, he gives me money and we had sex. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It wasn't one and then the other. It's like both of these things happen. And also that would have been just horrible if if you were the one who got repercussions and and not them. I know. I was terrified. I was like, that's, I can't go to jail. I do not have the strength for that. And just the fact that you were like working with kids at the time is so pure while all of this was happening. I know. I don't work with kids anymore. It was it was too much. But yeah, it was like very polar opposites, like going to work, working with kids, coming home and being like, holy fuck. How long about did this whole thing last when she started threatening you to the last time you heard from them? Um, I would say like two and a half weeks. Jeez. And what exactly did they want from you? Like a certain amount of money? Was that mostly it? Yeah, they wanted like seven thousand dollars from me. Wow. And she was like basically just saying that even if I did give her the money, she wanted to ruin my life because I slept with her husband. Um, and he does have like a criminal history of embezzlement and prostitution, which I did not know, but I looked up his name. Like I probably should have done before I met with him. And it (laughs) does come up. Lesson learned. (laughs) We research people now. Wow. Sorry, I'm just processing it all, which I I imagine you still maybe are too. How long ago did this happen? (laughs) This, the, like, his wife reaching out to me was this past February. Oh, my God. This is really recent. Wow. Yeah, and we met up this past summer. So it had been, like, quite a while before his wife reached out to me. Did you um, try to get the video if it exists. I tried to get her to send me like photos because she said she had videos and photos of me. And um, she like wouldn't. She was like, no, because then like 
you're going to go to the police and, like, claim that I'm harassing you when I'm not. Do you think maybe they actually don't have photos or videos? When you were that night or that day, did you actually clock any cameras or feel like he was being weird about maybe recording you? I thought it was weird that, like, one, I didn't see his phone anywhere in the room, but, like, I was texting him when I, like, got there, like, hey, I'm here, and he was like, okay, I'll come get you. But I didn't see his phone in the hotel room, which is why I was like, okay, so I think he probably does have this video of me because, like, he didn't have a phone. And it was just, like, he w seemed, like, off, like, nervous or, like, just not, like, completely there. And he was just, like, giving off weird vibes. But I don't know. Maybe he's just a weird dude and, like, but then where would the phone be, you know? Yeah, like, like it, it could have been hidden somewhere subtly. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. Um, what, what is there anything that, it's okay if the answer is no. Is there anything notable about the experience when you were with him that you think back on that, like, stands out to you? The only thing I remember is that, like, it was so bad. Like, having sex with an old man, do not recommend, not worth it. I was, the Olympics were going on at the time, and I was just sitting there, like, watching the Olympics while things were going on, just like, oh, yeah, cool, they're running. Like, I was not paying attention whatsoever to anything sexual going on in that room. Jeez. Again, it seems like you're chill. You're fine, which is great, and I don't mean to make you not fine, but I I've been in experiences where I've, like, dissociated or didn't want to be there, and, like, I just, I, I, I empathize, basically. Like, it's not an easy thing to experience. Yeah, it definitely, like, I would never do it again, I know you, like, I saw a lot of, the reason I did it was because I saw so many things on TikTok about people with sugar daddies and going out to, like, dinner and everything. And I was like, that can't be that bad. But it really is, like, not a pleasant experience. Like, I would not recommend it, especially for people watching the content who are younger and, like, more naive. It's definitely not what it looks like at all. D does that make you mad at all? Like, you were kind of fed this idea that this would be like a glamorous lifestyle and it was basically just gave you trauma yeah I would say so like not really mad like at them just mad that like I kind of like fell for it I was like oh yeah like that seems easy money like and this looks great where I didn't research it at all I didn't like look into like how it actually works and 99% of the time, you do have to fuck the dude to, like, get any money, which is never put out there on, like, media. Yeah. So. Do you know anyone who does it in real life or, like, people online that you watch that do it? Like, who are your references? No, I don't. I just saw, for some reason, last summer, I was on Sugar Daddy TikTok and Sugar Baby TikTok. So there's random strangers who, like... I don't even know. Um, I was just seeing their videos and I was like, that seems fun. But they were also in like New York City, L.A. I live in a small town in Connecticut. OK, so different vibes, I guess different vibes. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you haven't been on the site again since. No, fuck no. Yeah. I deleted I deleted it. I was on a couple different websites and I deleted all of them and I blocked everyone that I was talking to. Uh, R.I.P. Cherry Nicole. Yeah. Well, I have thought of becoming a stripper, so maybe I'll bring it back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, ideally, there's more protection in those environments. Yeah, ideally. So, but... <laughs> I don't know. Cherry Nicole makes a comeback better than before. Exactly. Uh, it sounds like people in your life know about what happened, at least your friend, right? The one giggling. Yeah, just my roommates. Okay. Um, and my therapist. I was like scared I definitely would not like tell anyone else like my parents or like friends that I'm not super close with just because it's I feel like hey I had sex with an old man and his wife is harassing me is not something that like people would be like oh yeah cool cool uh, <laughs> yeah normal everyday things yeah so that makes the sense. only people that know are my roommates and now yeah, everyone <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you have people in your life that you trust to tell. And I'm also really grateful that you're sharing it with me. That's, I don't know, that you trust me to talk with you about it. Yeah, of course. I love all your videos and revealing your secrets. 
thank you. Um, little too incesty, but true. I don't disagree. People need to pause on that. <laughs> I want to hear what your takeaways are. You already shared a couple takeaways, which is like research people before you get to meeting with them. The yes. sugar daddy sh lifestyle or the sugar baby lifestyle is maybe not as glamorous as it's shown on the internet. Do you have any other yeah, takeaways? Sure. I think a big takeaway was that like, no matter what, trust your gut. Because the whole day leading up to it, I like I just felt weird about it. And I was like, this isn't really me. Like, I don't, like, I know why I'm doing this because I need money. But, like, am I doing this for, like, the right reasons? And I don't know. I just, like, wasn't super excited about it. And even when I got there, like I said, I had, like, a weird feeling. Like, where's his phone? Why is he acting weird? And I did not trust my gut. And then afterwards, I was like, hmm. Like, it was weird and, like, kind of traumatic. But... It'll never come up again. Like, I got rid of all the sites, and it does come back to bite you in the ass. Mm. So you need to, you know, cover your ass and trust your instinct. I love that advice, and it's true, because I've also been in situations where I was like, eh, it's no big deal that I feel this, like, impending doom. <laughs> and then it, it plays out. Well, thank you for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to say? No, I don't think so. I think we talked pretty much about most of it all. I do want to say thank you again. I literally, like, love all your videos. I watch them all. And I've been subscribed for years. So this is, like, crazy that I get to, like, talk to you about something, like, one of my secrets. Well, thank you for supporting me and also just showing up today. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. Wow. That was really, really interesting. And I'm so glad that she was willing to share all of that with me. So thank you again. I want to say my favorite part of that whole call was her takeaway that you're supposed to trust your gut, that you should trust your gut. Because I have also been in scenarios where I have not trusted my gut. And the world always has a way of showing you that you should have. More often than not, I think deep down, I really do know whether something is the right choice for me or not. So that's a good takeaway. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. It was so interesting. And I'm so excited to keep filming these and hear from more of you about your secrets. This next segment, I'm also very excited about. I am going to be revealing your secrets as my own to strangers on Chat Roulette. If you don't know what Chat Roulette is, it's basically a website where you can... Uh, it's like speed dating, right? You can talk to strangers quickly and change to the next person if you don't want to talk to them. The reason that I think this is going to be so fun is because we're going to get other people's reactions to your secrets more than just my own. Also, I really just enjoy messing with people, so <laughs> I'm excited. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good too. Where are you from? I live in California. That's cool. Is that a, do you have a pet behind you? No. Oh, I don't know. Um, I have a cat. Uh, I have a cat too, actually. She is about a four and a half years ago. Uh -huh. Half years. Mm, she is a Russian blue. Do you know Russian blue? Yeah. Mine too. Yeah. Ah, that's really nice. That's I am. Um, really cool. I guess my only problem with the cat is like it doesn't show much affection. <laughs> so something I like doing, I like to feed my cat my skin, and he'll eat it. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Cause, and then it's like he's like taking me in. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it, it feels like he's really embracing me. <laughs> I can understand it. I can understand it. <laughs> so you... That's interesting. You've not... Oh, you haven't fed your cat your skin? No, actually. Uh, I just give uh, some... How do I tell you? Uh, I just sometimes give her a little bit of meat, but she never take... Uh, Directly in my hand, actually. She just 
go her entire hit uh, hit your uh, hit her head with my head and drop to meat and after that she eats. It's your meat. What the meat? It's your meat. Like, is is it from your arms, from your legs, from your stomach? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just the meat. How I tell you, uh, when I'm the cow meat, when I'm eating some meat oh. from the cow, the beef. That's so. That's so weird. I gotta go. You seem cool as fuck. Are you real? You seem cool as shit. I am real. Yeah, that's sick. What and are you gonna do about it? Am I on like a podcast? Wait, time out. First off, possibility has to go out the window. That was crazy. What? First off, I'm really high. Let me let me take a step back for a second. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair. Are we on a podcast? Uh, am I on a podcast? Yeah. Are you you're filming a podcast right now? No, you. No. I do have the microphone. Uh, that's uh, that's all that's happened. I have a microphone too. Oh, okay. I, your setup is immaculate. I have a really nice basement. That's sick. I'm in like this. <laughs> Look, I I gotta cut to the chase. Okay, go ahead. I'm I came on here because I'm a little stressed about something that happened, and I w- was looking for somebody's advice. I have some advice. I'm pretty good at advice. Um. Okay. So I slept with my husband's best friend last night. And uh, I don't even know if I feel guilty or not, but I just don't have anybody else to tell. You slept with your hu- your husband? My, I slept with my husband's best friend. That's something. Yeah, and I liked. I mean, I liked it. Okay. So, okay. First question is: How long have you been married? Four years. Four years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do you have any kids? No, not yet. Oh, I, I, I stumbled because we do have a dog who, yeah, it's a, that's my child. Do you love him? My dog? Duh. No, no, motherfucker. Yeah, I love my husband. We've been together oh, okay. for a long no, time. No, no, I think it's time to let him go. Whoa. That's a quick answer. Yeah, it is a quick answer, but that's a quick analysis as well. You stumbled on the question, do you love him? You already cheated. Let me finish. You already cheated on him. So now you got to put yourself in his shoes and let, if he found out, how guilty you would feel. Do you think I should tell him what happened or just call it off? Leave it up to his, let his friend tell him. Because no offense to you, you don't want to ruin two relationships. Okay. Okay. You think it's cool if I keep sleeping with this friend? <laughs> You're fucking with me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm having a life crisis and you're laughing at me. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at your decision. Okay? Second off. I'm not saying, yeah, you just had to think about that one real quick. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Second off, if you were to ask me the question again, and I'm going to try not to laugh. I'm sorry. Just ask me the question again. I need to hear it one more time. You think it's okay if I keep sleeping with my husband's best friend? If I call things off with my husband? Okay, yes. Okay, I heard it. Yes. If you call things off with your husband, if he wants to be friends, with your husband, if he is your husband's best friend, he's not going to sleep with you. If he does, then that's up to you two. Maybe you two are destined for each other. If that is the case, then cool. I'm not going to stand between that by saying you shouldn't. But like I'm saying, leave that, you have to, again, leave it up to him. Because if he's still going to be friends with your husband, because I have my best friend, okay. we would never do that to each other. And if we did, our relationship would probably be over. Okay. Uh, they might work it out between each other. I don't know, but you're you're really insightful. I just this is crazy. This is awesome. Do you have like a degree or no, in experience. helping? <laughs> you have ex- oh, have you cheated? Oh uh, yes, I have. Uh, it was awful. It was awful. Yeah, I uh, I enjoyed it as well. Though. Oh yeah, I mean, there's something naughty about it. Just getting caught, you know. You you wanted to get caught. No, just that feeling. 
Like, there's a thrill in getting caught for you? <laughs> Interesting. No, motherfucker. I don't cheat. You just said Bad you did. Cheat. Yeah, I have once, but I don't do that as, like, a thing. It was a mistake. It was yeah, a mistake. I, hate, I hated everything about it. But you were a little, like, jazzed about the idea of getting caught. In the moment, I would say, yeah, if you want to be honest. Yeah, in the okay. moment, yeah. Because, like, for me, I'm not interested in getting caught. I just want to have sex. You know? So that's just interesting. But to, to each their own, you know? We're all different people. Um, oh, are you in the Los Angeles area? Um, I'm free tonight. That's crazy. No, I'm not. I'm in Boston. Um. <laughs> I'm actually going to be there in July. <laughs> For what? Why? My family is on the East Coast. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Where on the East Coast? It doesn't matter. Know? But uh, I'm near Boston. Do you want to get my number? It's okay. Oh. It's okay. I'm just here to talk to people. Okay. I have, I have a girlfriend who I, who I like. Oh. Don't cheat on her. I don't want to. Okay. But I, I, I enjoyed this conversation, though. This was... Me too. Awesome. You were really insightful. Um, hey, I have a question for you. What's up? If I actually was on a podcast, would you let me use your face? Oh, you motherfucker. What do you, uh, why? Content? Why you... <sighs> I can't. I can't let you. Okay. I can blur it. Yeah, do that. Okay. Blur the chair, too. All right. Weird, blur every, but... Blur the whole screen. I respect you and your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask the podcast name? Yeah, it's called Revealing Your Secrets. It's not out yet, but it will be out on June 23rd. June 23rd. Yeah. You're, like I said, your setup is sick. I know. Keep this going. I and will. It was nice better. meeting you. It was nice meeting you as well. Hope you're successful. Thank you. You too. Of course. Bye. Bye. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so pleased. So, uh, what are you doing on here then? Um, I'm just practicing. Practicing for what? Okay. Well, like, I genuinely believe that I'm going to be really famous one day. So, like, I picture oh, yeah. myself having these vivid fantasies of being famous, doing skits on talk shows, like answering questions that the interviewers give me, give me you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so you're practicing, yeah. Yes, I, I also see myself like being with celebrities, having drama, getting my heart broken over and over again. And like, sometimes I even make myself cry about, about being heartbroken. I rate know? that, I rate that. Yeah, like last night I was devastated that me and Harry broke up. That's peak. But that's real peak. What did you say? That's peak? Yeah. What does that mean? That's bad. That's peak. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm going to have an international audience at some point, so it's good for me to know these things. That's peak. Why you say it like that, though? What's, what's like, good? So that's peak. What's, like, the opposite of that's peak? Like, that's... That's dank. That's dank. I don't speak like that, though. That's exactly what you sound like. It's not. I'm going to be a professional actress, so I know I'm what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, Whoa. Okay. That's true. <laughs> it's part of why I'm going to be <laughs> famous. Um, I was wondering, and this is kind of why I'm on here. I want to practice my interview skills. So maybe you could, like, be my, like, Jimmy Fallon. You know what I mean? What do, what do I get? In Jimmy Kimmel. Course? Whatever. Jimmy. Be my Jimmy. I'll be with Jimmy. What do I get in return? Um, time with me. Other than time with you. That's really valuable. So I don't have anything. All right. Well, I'm going to need something else other than time you get me. What? I'm going to need something more than just time you get me. Like what? Mm, time for you for something else you get me. I'm going to need you to explicitly... Let me know what you want from me. What do, you, what do you think? Do you want an autograph? Nah. Do you like a meet and greet? Something like a meet and greet. 
Okay, this is like, I don't know if I'm off base here, but it's sounding like naughty. I guess you could say you're on the right lines. I'm more of like a like model actress than like an OnlyFans type celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. So that's not like a service that I provide, but if you have movies that you make, I'll be in them. What is in like pornos? No, like like a, like a murder mystery or like a drama. Nah, but we we can make a we can make a movie. You and me. Are you working with any like really good producers or directors that I would know of? Nah. Well, I know Johnny Sins in it and Fake Taxi. I don't know what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> so is that yeah? Then. I think so. I mean, it sounds like that's legit. Whatever you said. What, so like you and me right here, right now? Um, I mean, we would probably need to have like table reads, costume fittings. Nah, just like get the kit off and just go right now. I don't think I'm, I mean, like, I guess I should be ready. I want to be able to re like take anything. Okay, yeah, what's my, what is, what do you need me to do? Get naked. Oh. Um, that's actually not in my contract. Oh, peak. Peak. And peak honestly, Barrett. you asking is not dank. Why is it not dank? Because that's clearly not what I'm interested in doing. I want to be a how, star, not a porn star. How am I to know that? I just told you. It's like you're not even listening. Got to shoot my shot though, isn't it? Well, shot denied. I'm leaving. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? You know what you kind of remind me of? You, you're giving me the energy of my pet snail. Um, makes yeah. sense, yeah. You, you understand that? Yeah, I get that. You do give snail energy. Yeah. An old man's snail, yeah. An old man's snail. I just, sometimes I have like these compulsive thoughts about my snail though that I wish I didn't have. And I'm kind of feeling them about you now. About your snail? Yeah, like I guess I worry. It's like I don't want to do it, but I think about what if I crushed my snail? Or like what if I accidentally hurt it or like threw it or ate it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Is that a joint that you're smoking? It is. I feel like that might help me because I'm stressed. Don't be stressed. Oh, okay. That was easy. So, so yeah. if you were to give me advice about this whole like snail worrying, like just don't. Why is your room set up like, uh, like a podcast? I never thought about it like that. I don't know. Should I start a podcast? Are you a crime junkie? Uh, no, but I do think about hurting my snail a lot. I think that's kind of normal. Really? Probably. I don't know. I don't have a snail. I wouldn't know. But if you did, you probably would think about hurting it a lot. Probably not, I know. Oh, you just said it was normal. I'm getting mixed messages. I mean, I don't know normal for... Look, okay, I don't know how or what white women think. So it might be a normal thing for white women to want to crush their snail, or it could not be. I don't know. I have four dogs, and I would never want to crush them i you know what i think you're right i think it i think it might be a white woman thing got a real 70s vibe going on there so i'm just processing a lot right now so i don't know how to react to that um i can't like undo the whole white woman thing so what do you think that i should how do i navigate the whole like the snail thing because i'm a white woman <laughs> Um, 
I mean, it's not like a bad thing, you know? Unless I do it. I guess. I mean, people eat snails all the time, I guess. I don't know. That's true. I, I just, I don't think they like befriend them first. Yeah, you shouldn't really. It sounds like you should just give your snail to somebody else. Where, do you want it? No. My dogs will eat it. Cause I, no matter what, my snail's in danger. Probably. Well, this wasn't really that helpful. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a stoner dude who fucking just chilling. I don't just know. Just chilling. I'm not one to get advice from. Yeah, well. Unless I, you're trying to be sober from drugs. Okay, what advice do you have about that? Wait, also, I mean, wait, what? You're literally doing drugs right now. What do you mean you can give good advice about? Okay, me smoking weed is different from being, like, addicted to hard drugs. Okay, fair. Very, very, like, I have my medical card. I go to a dispensary. You know, it's different from, like, smoking fentanyl or... You know, if you want to get sober up from like heroin or fentanyl or oxys or roxy, something like that. Oxys yeah. and roxys. I don't know about any of that. I just got a snail that I like to hang out with. You know what? I think I'm gonna go crush it, actually. Okay, that was <laughs> that was very fun. I'm sweating a little bit. I hope uh, everybody who was involved doesn't mind that I'm going to expose them to the world. Oops. This last segment is called Round of a Pause because we are celebrating those of you who opened up and shared your secrets. It's not an easy thing to do. And also, I wanted to give listeners a palate cleanser before you continue on with your day because hearing this stuff can be intense. I want to give you something you can either listen to and or engage with that will make you feel better. In honor of Dimitri, the Russian dwarf hamster, who I dedicated this podcast episode to, I want to assign all of you, including me, I'm going to do it as well, to spend time outside. So many of us spend so much time inside. And for me, I always forget how important it is to go outside until I do and then realize how much better I feel afterwards. So we, we are animals, right? Just like Dimitri, we are animals. We thrive outdoors. We need sun. We need air. So your assignment is to go outside, spend some time in nature, whether that's just a walk, whether that's on your porch. If all you'll do is open your window, fine. I will take it. And uh, you get extra credit points for the more time you spend outside. And uh, if you hug a tree, take your shoes off, walk around. If you get wet, you get even more points. I just want you to be have a nice time. That's your homework. Go outside, have a nice time. And uh, we may show what you guys have gotten up to for the round of a pause assignment on the show in another episode. So if you want to send a picture to secrets at castmedia.com, that's cast with a K, feel free. Or you can use hashtag revealing your secrets and uh, upload it to any social media website. Make sure to tag me too. It's A-Y-Y-D-U-B-S on all platforms. And that's the show. I had such a fun time filming this. I hope you all enjoyed listening to it or watching wherever you're consuming the podcast. Thank you for joining me. In the next episode, we are going to have my therapist sit down with me and go through some of your more intense secrets, if you can imagine that to be possible. And not just more intense. I just wanted to talk about topics that I think would be interesting to have a professional's opinion on. So stay tuned for that. I hope you will join me.
Thank you again for listening. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review Revealing Your Secrets, the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, you are only as sick as your secrets, so send them to me. Go to castmedia.com slash secrets, that's cast with a K, to leave a voicemail or fill out the anonymous submission form at the bottom of my show notes. Today's episode of Revealing Your Secrets is a production by Cast Media. I'm your host, Alex Weiss. My producer is Amanda Elliott. Our executive producers are Colin Thompson and Harris Lane. Our editor is Patrick Carrion. Our technical engineer is Olivia Haas and designs and animations by Patrick Carrion. I will see you next time. 